I want to start with a few statistics, which may be more intimidating than they um, uh, possibly, possibly are. So we, we get around 15,000 applications a year, and we make 6,500, somewhere between 6,500 and 7,000 offers, and we have about 2,300 places. And although the 15,000 and the 6,000 vary, the 2,300 doesn't, because it's quite difficult to crowbar extra seats into lecture theatres and um, build extra buildings, at least in small um, uh, periods of time. So, so that's roughly what we're aiming to get. And we're looking, obviously, for the, um, the brightest and the, and the best students that we can get. And um, this gives us quite a, quite a success rate. But I think it hides a picture, which is that we're actually trying to help you get in. We're not just going to say, there you are, beat those odds. Um, it's not quite like that at all. And what I hope to, to, do, to do for you today is to give you a, um, a, a few tips on how, how, to, how to be in those 2,300, hopefully at the end of the, end of the uh, process in, uh, uh, in October. So uh, our offers range quite widely depending on which department you apply to. So um, our minimum offer is three A's and it can go right up to um, two A stars and an A in chemical engineering or even with a step examination um, if you apply to mathematics. Um, and that variation is reflected also in the international baccalaureate um, which we, we make offers on as well and, and very, very uh, welcoming of, um, so anywhere between 35 and 42 points is, is, is uh, an offer that you will see from, from various departments. So our offers are not fixed per college, they are dependent on the individual departments and it is the departments who manage those admissions and they manage those offers, which I'll come back to uh, later. Okay. So throughout this little talk, I want to, I want to give you some tips. I want to, I want to uh, try and you know, reward you, if you like, for, for, for bothering to wend your way up here and discover this um, slightly out-of-the-way lecture theatre. Um, I haven't been here in about three years, so, so I had to remind myself where it was as well. Um, so the first tip, if you're applying or your son or daughter is applying, is apply early. It gives your application the maximum possible time to be considered uh, by the admissions tutor. And... Um, if, if there's any questions that arise or any issue about whether you can make this interview day or the next interview day, then if you've applied early, all of these problems are ones that are very small and can be ironed out. If, if, you're, if an application arrives late and it constrains the admissions process, then it can be, it can be difficult to accommodate, um, accommodate, but we will always try and make the best um, possible arrangements. But if you get your application in early, and that means talk to your school. Your school will have um, their own internal deadlines in terms of writing references for your UCAS application. And um, if, you can, if you can convince them to include uh, your UCAS application in whatever initial sift of references they're, they're going, to, going to be writing, then I'd encourage you to, uh, to, to, to try and do that. Just, if you, again, give them enough, as enough notice notice as you can because they, they, they've got lots of stuff going on simultaneously and they, if, if, if they know that you're applying to a top institution then, then they will be able to prioritise your, 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 your application as well. All right, so I want to give you a feel for the, the overall timeline, the, pick, the, the dates, the critical dates that, that make up the admission cycle. So for entry into uh, Imperial College in October 2014. You would apply sometime on or after the middle of September in 2013, this year. And if you are also applying to Oxford or Cambridge or you're applying to medicine, 
you have to get your application in by the 15th of, of October this year. Okay? But that's, that, that means that you'll be putting Imperial College down as well, but, but because you've got those other constraints, because you're maybe applying to Hospital Cambridge or you're applying for medicine, you absolutely have to get your application, which will include your applications to other institutions as well, into, into UCAS by that, that deadline. The overall UCAS deadline, if you're not applying to those, uh, those places or you're not applying for medicine, is the 15th of January. But when I say apply early, I mean try and cl be closer to this deadline um, and you know, not so close to this deadline, if, if you possibly can. We will, of course, consider your application. We are duty bound to do so if we receive your application by the 15th of January, but it, it comes with the, uh, the, the, what I said earlier about being able to deal with any hiccups that have, that have come up um, during the process. So if you can get your application in um, around October, November, that's great, that's fine. You will have access to a good, good tranche of interview days and hopefully everything will be able to proceed smoothly. Okay. So all of this, all of this sort of timeline, it, it, looks, it looks a little daunting, and you'll get continual updates from UCAS as to which dates apply to you. So it's not that you have to remember all of these, but I'm just trying to give you a broad picture. Um, in the rare occasion, certainly for Imperial applicants anyway, where a, an applicant does not receive any offers from any of their uh, any of the universities to which they've applied, then a process called UCAS Extra kicks in. So if they've been turned down by all their you know, um, universities, then they get one more shot. They get one more application to um, a single course at another university, and they can try and get their application in, in, in uh, late February and see if it can be considered um, along with all of the others. Um, we don't get many UCAS Extra applicants. Um, but one or two to come, up, come our way um, for, for each department. So it's, it's, it, it doesn't never happen, but, it, it, um, but it's, it's not, not common either. Um, we are, in normal circumstances, obliged to reply to, or uh, we'll make a decision on your offer, I should say, by the end of March, which means we have communicated that offer back to UCAS. You can log on to your UCAS uh, portal, your website, and a look at your account and you should see a decision there. We would like to get the, uh, any decision to you in advance of the end of March. So end of March is, is, is the end of the process in terms of what you see and you should be getting all of your um, decisions back from your universities at that stage. But um, if you've come for interview in, in November, then typically a good department will get a decision back to you in December or maybe early January if they're um, very heavily loaded with applications. So you should get a response well in advance of that. But that's when we have to make a, a, a response. And then you, in turn, have to make a response back to us to tell us whether you're accepting that offer or, or, or declining it. And if you've received all the, of the decisions from, from your uh, applications, from uh, your universities, then the deadline for you to do, do so is the, is, is the 8th of May. Okay, I believe these these dates are sort of uh, still to be confirmed, but they're, they're uh, by UCAS. But these are these are very close to where they will be, so they'll be plus or minus a day. But. Right. So that's the sort of technicalities of you know we talk to you, you talk to us, and then in mid August, mid July, if you're an IB student, your your results come out. In the case of IB and A level results, they automatically get communicated to us um, through UCAS and the exam boards. And we then look to see whether you've met your offer. If you've met your offer, congratulations, you're in. Um, um, if, you, if you haven't met your offer, it's not the end of the world, um, but there, there'll be a process of, of reconsideration where we look to see how close you are to your offer, look at all the other factors that went in your, into your application, and, uh, and then make a decision as to whether we, can, um, whether we can take you, given the space that we have. So that, that happens in mid-August, and we try really hard. So I can't remember, I think it's the 12th of August this year is, 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 uh, is A-level results week. So we try really hard to get, get uh, 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 decisions to students by the, the Thursday 
um, or at least, at, le at, last, at least a Friday on, on, on A-level admissions uh, <coughs> confirmation week. So, uh, so you should know by the middle of August exactly where you are. Now, if you've done extremely well and you've applied to uh, five universities and you've done better than expected, a process called UCAS adjustment opens up. Now, is it, this is more, from our perspective, this is more the case of occasionally we see UCAS adjustment applications. So UCAS, let me explain what UCAS adjustment is. Um, UCAS adjustment is a process where if you've done very well and you maybe didn't pitch your application to um, places that you thought you had a chance of getting into, but then you got an A star and two A's and you think, well, maybe I should have applied to Imperial or uh, another good place, then you can submit uh, an application, a late application to us or to another institution under this UCAS adjustment scheme. We hardly get any UCAS adjustment applicants as yet, so it's, it's not terribly well used, but that's, how, that's the process. I imagine most of you sitting here will be pitching your applications correctly the first time, as in, you know, you'll know what you're capable of and you'll know where you're applying, which is, which is always a good idea. But, um, you know, anyway, that you, that you, you know about it. Also, if, you, if you've missed out on your uh, firm and insurance place, you haven't made your firm uh, university, hasn't made your insurance university, then uh, you go into UCAS clearing, which is the other side of it. And the day after, um, um, I think it's Thursday or the Friday of, of A-level results week, UCAS clearing opens up, and, and then you get to ring round admissions tutors and find out if they've got any places, that kind of thing. Hopefully, you know, this doesn't apply to you either. Right, good. So that's the timeline, and it's a bit uh, involved. So most of those dates will probably not affect you. The really important ones are the 15th of October for getting your application in for um, us and Oxford and Cambridge and medicine, if you're applying for to Oxford and Cambridge and medicine. If you're not applying to those places, 15th of January is really important. But as I said, try and get it in early. All right, good. So, most of the departments that, uh, um, that um, you might apply to at Imperial College interview their applicants. And I want to give you a little bit of insight into the process that you would see if you're applying, applying here, because really that's why you're here. So, if you're in an interview situation, one of the really important questions, not so much that you'll be asked this question directly, necessarily, but you know, the academics who are talking to you will be really keen to know that you have a strong sense of why you want to do the subject you've applied for. I mean, if it's uh, biology or, 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 or chemistry or, or physics or um, mathematics, these are all subjects which exist at school, and so you've got a nice... Uh, relationship between the school subject that you've been studying and the subject you, you, you're going on to study at university, although there is a, you know, there is a development, of course, in the subject. But if it's, if it's a subject like mechanical engineering or civil engineering or electri electrical engineering, then you might not have had any school-based experience of that subject. So it's really important, especially in those cases, to, to find out as much as you can about, it, about, about that topic, that, that degree, and, uh, and how... How it, how it motivates and enthuses you. That's, I think, so important. It, and and if, if that comes across in an interview, it makes a, a huge difference to, 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 to the success of the interview, I think. So how do you get invited to an interview? Well, um, uh, the first admissions tutor knows uh, that they've received an application from you is that they'll get a, a, an email saying a clutch of new applications have arrived. They'll download them all um, from our... Central Registry, who will in turn have got them from UCAS, and we've got a PDF of all your details of your UCAS application. And that will contain your GCSE results or equivalent, and it will contain which A-levels or IB uh, um, subjects you're taking, and it'll contain your personal statement, and it'll contain predicted grades from your school, um, and it'll contain uh, your references from your school amongst a wealth of other information, but those are the key, key things that we see straight away. So critical in, in that list, in no particular order, but subject selection, what A-levels you're taking, what IB uh, subjects you're taking, 
very important for, for an admissions tutor to see whether you're a good fit for the department. After that, the personal statement, of course, what the pr predictions from the school are in terms of the grades they think you're going to get, um, GCSE results, referee statements, all of these things are, 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 are factors that each department will look at. I can't tell you that any one of those is the most important or that there is a particular ranked order of how we assess these criteria, but they're all important. Some departments may put some more weight on, on, on those subjects than others, but, but as I say, those are the, those are the critical, uh, critical uh, factors. So, what about the personal statement? A lot of people ask um, about the personal statement. I think there may even be a, a writing personal statement um, presentation today. So, I think the sort of thing we look for, we see some quite interesting pieces of prose in, in personal statements, and it's, it's, it's always fun, but what we're looking for in terms of standout passages are if you've been to open days, if you've been to taster courses, if you've read books, if, you, if you've done a little bit of investigation around the subject yourself, maybe you've taken an extended project in, a, in, a, in an area that's related to what you're really excited about. If you've done all of those things, that's the sort of thing which stands out. Of course, it's going to be you know, padded out with, 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 with other things as well. But, but those are, you know, if I were going through a personal statement and I was underlining issues that I wanted to talk about at an interview, those would be the things I'd be, I'd be uh, highlighting um, for, for, for discussion and to just sort of gauge, again, your enthusiasm and, uh, and interest in the subject. Some uh, interviewers and some departments will also be interested in extracurricular activities and you know, where, where, that, where that's something you want to write in a personal statement, that's great. It shows of obviously well-rounded person and it shows of uh, somebody who's capable of managing their time really well and that's, that's always super. But I, I would typically not put them in the first category of things I'm interested in, but definitely it's good sort of extra, extra information. So what about the successful interview? So you, you submitted your application, the personal statement, hit all the, pressed all the buttons and, and, and you've got an invitation to a, a, an interview. Interviews will vary by department. Some, some departments will have some elements of test going on. Some will have discussions in groups. Some will have project presentations. Some will have all of these things. Um, so if you're in an interview situation with one or more interview, uh, interviewers, then the sort of things they're looking for, again, it, it, it are related to the enthusiasm and the motivation that you hopefully displayed in the UCAS application in the first place. So, you know, have you got that motivation? Have you looked at the, the, the subject in some detail? Do you have an idea of, um, uh, of what, it, what it's going to entail and, and how this is going to pan out in terms of, you know, possible, possible career? It doesn't mean that you have to have decided what you're going to do, but, but, you know, do you know what sort of careers it leads to? And a good place to get all of that information is, in fact, the department's website to which you're applying. So. It's really a case of are you interested enough to, to do a little bit of reading around. Um, some departments will have a technical interview which involves some kind of logic test or some kind of um, subject specific test. If, if, if you're in that situation, um, then do contact the department, ask, you know, ask them in advance what, what, what might be involved. They'll be happy to give you some indication. Um, but you know, don't panic. They're not trying to trip you up. Most of the time in a technical interview, the actual right answer isn't as important as how you got to it. So if you, if you show the process that you're, you're going through, if you, if you show your thinking, show your working indeed, um, then, then that will be the thing that will be most, of most interest to the, to the interviewer uh, and definitely something that we look for. So that's, that's, that's how I think you should work, that's how I think you should play uh, technical interviews. It's, it's tell them what you're thinking, tell them what, what avenues you're going down. If you're going down the wrong route, the interview will often go, leave you, leave you having a go for a couple of minutes, and they go, well, try thinking more in that direction. Try, try um, something else completely, <laughs> maybe. But they won't just let you flounder. They're not there to just, just watch you sweat for, for half an hour and, and, and then laugh or anything. You know? so, um, and they want to know that you can learn, because apart from anything else, it, it's got to be a two-way interaction, because often the person sitting in that interview room is someone who's going to be lecturing you, tutoring you, giving you seminars, tutorials in the first year, in the second year, in the third year of your degree. And they want to know that 
in a tutorial environment that they can uh, give you some information or give you a hint and they can see you responding to that and building upon it and they can see it's a, you know, an educational process that's going to work. It's going to be a, it's, it's a two-way process and that, that needs to be something that they can see evidence for. So willingness to learn and therefore listen also <laughs> is very, very helpful. Okay. So what makes a, a successful applicant? Ob obviously the grades are very important and the process is sort of fixed around the schedule of being awarded your exam result. But, you know, if I haven't emphasized it enough, motivation is so important here. You've got to have enough motivation now that's going to last you three or four or five years, depending on the degree that you're taking. That's a lot of motivation. There are going to be times during that, 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 that period where it dips a little bit, but then it's got, you've got to sort of be able to rem remind yourself what was so exciting about this subject and then pick it back up and uh, uh, run with it to the end of the degree. So you've got to be, you've got to be motivated for your own um, success, really, in the, in the degree as much as anything else. And that's the sort of thing that we're going to look, we obviously want to see in, the, uh, in a successful applicant. Because this is imperial, as we are very interested in how hard you work, and we will see of that hopefully coming through in your references and in your, uh, in your personal statement. So, but it is important because we have some of the highest numbers of contact hours per week of any university in the UK, um, some departments as much as 30 to 30 six hours a week of, of contact hours in the first year. So, you know, you've got to be really engaged with your course, turning up for everything promptly, making sure you're availing yourself of all of the help and, and support that we're, we're giving you. And then, you know, on top of that 30 to 36 hours, there'll be an expectation of 20 to 30 hours of self-study as well. So, you know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of material to get through. But hopefully, with rewards at the end both in terms of the job prospects, the career panning out for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, you know, there's, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard work, but hard work well invested. Of course, then, time management. One of the hardest things about coming to university is not necessarily having quite the rigid structure that you've been used to uh, from a school environment. And you'll have lots of things that compete for your time. Fun things, work things, um, things that are not strictly part of the degree but will be incredibly useful down the line when you go to um, go into a, a, a job. So being able to juggle all of those things and successfully come out with a degree and some exciting interests and um, a story to tell in a subsequent, uh, for a subsequent job interview, very, very important. And you've got to have good time management skills for that. And of course, we want to see potential. We want to see potential to succeed. Uh, and the interviews are designed to try to focus in on, uh, on little seeds of, of, of potential that we can say, oh, that's, that's exciting. They're thinking in that way, and I haven't seen that before. I'll make a note of that in, the, in my notes on this, on this candidate. Difficult to fake that one, I think. I mean, that's sort of there, hopefully, for all of you. Good. Um, so the final tip is, because this process is run by the departments and is, is very subject specific. Do talk to your admissions tutor. If you have any questions, don't be, or, or you know, any issues that arise about, you know, okay, you offered an interview and you're, uh, you know, you're very worried that you can't make that one, there'll almost certainly be another interview available, especially, of course, if you applied early. So just get in touch. Another arrangement will be, I'm sure, forthcoming. Um, they're, they're, they're trying to be on your side. They want to get the best applicants, and if, if they perceive you to be that, then, then they, will, they will also make uh, efforts to, to try and make that work for you. So do talk to the, uh, your admissions tutor, whether it's about the structure of the interview or whether it's about any logistical arrangements, they're happy to talk to you.